Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Bulldog Report. This is Eddie Kalegi here live as the Metuchen Bulldogs get ready for a big-time game against the Middlesex Blue Jays. Should be a great one. Eddie Kalegi here on the call as the Dogs face off with the Blue Jays. They faced off yesterday in Middlesex, but it was an easy win as the Blue Jays cruise to a 9-1 to victory in Middlesex. And for Metuchen, it's been tough. We might even say it's been a rough stretch for the Bulldogs over these past three games. They've scored just four runs over the last 21 innings, outscored 11-4 to over the span. They've allowed eight stolen bases just yesterday. And most importantly, they've fallen from first to third in the GMC Blue Division. Middlesex is just taking their early reps. It looks like they'll be in their black uniforms today, which will be a little better than the girls' team, of course. Yesterday, I had some trouble with the numbers because they were wearing gray, and also uh, a lot of their players were wearing hoodies over their uniforms. But for Metuchen, should be a big day because they will be sending their ace on the mound, Matt Rowe. It'll be the third time he has pitched this season that's been we've covered. It's the fourth time overall that we've seen Matt Rowe on the mound. And let's flash you back to the last time where he was the starter. It was a big game against Spotswood that Metuchen ended up coming up on top in. And if you go back, there was a big pitch late in the game. Three and two with two outs in the sixth inning. And you'll see the pitch here from Rowe to Jeff Osborne with the bases loaded. He ran into a little bit of trouble. He allowed his first two hits of the season but got the strike three called. He ended up finishing out the game, a complete game, shut out. He has not allowed a run yet to this point in the season, and he'll look to continue that today. But this is a tough Middlesex lineup, arguably even more difficult to face off with than Spotswood. Looking at the standings right now in the blue division, you've got Middlesex on top with a 6-0 record, albeit they have played a couple fewer games than some of their opponents, but 6-0 in the blue division. Spotswood is 9-1. That game which just showed you is their only loss to this point in the blue division. And then Metuchen, 9-3 overall, 7-2 in the blue division, with their two losses coming in the last two games. A 2-1 defeat on the road against Spotswood on Saturday, and then falling 9-1 here against Middlesex. So game two against Middlesex and the action just continues here in the GMC Blue Division because Middlesex and Spotswood will then face off with each other in the next game coming up. Uh, They will have a two-game series starting on the 15th. So great matchups all the way coming up. Uh, As for Middlesex 2019, they went 22-7 and with a 9-1 record in the division, and they ended up winning their sectional, CJ Group 2, before losing in round one of the groups against Glassboro, and they also had a surprising early exit from the GMC tournament. They lost in the first round against Piscataway. But for Metuchen, this is a big game to restore some confidence and just get back going after these last few games. Their offense had led them a lot of the way, as had their pitching, and both have faltered over these past three games, especially the offense, like we said, just four runs in the last 21 innings. But the big thing to watch for is going to be the stolen bases. We already alluded to it. Middlesex had eight in yesterday's game. Metuchen all season as a team has 12. It's insane. It's Metuchen's offense has to try to overpower Middlesex because Matt Rowe doesn't allow many base runners. But when he does, you can expect that these runners are going to be in motion. As you see, Middlesex just continuing with their, with their warm-ups. Another thing we want to mention today, there was some baseball news about the future of one of our players. A congratulations to Jack Berry, who committed to play Middlesex County College with the Blue Colts starting next spring. So congratulations to him that he'll be continuing his baseball career, having a great season at the plate, batting a team high 520 with 16 RBI, one of the key seniors leading the way here for the Bulldogs. But congratulations to him. But for right now, just looking out at the field, it's going to be time in just a few minutes. A little delayed. We were supposed to start right at 4 o'clock. I think Bendelsex showed up a few minutes late, but uh, not to be phased. We're just a few minutes away here from action between the Bulldogs and the Blue Jays and all the other Middlesex players getting ready out on the field. And for Metuchen, of course, a strong team. We'll see what they can do this 
afternoon. So, almost time for some action between the Blue Jays and the Bulldogs. And Eddie Kalegi, excited to be bringing it to you here on the Bulldog Report. During this little stoppage before the game starts, it's a good chance for us to plug the MHS podcast, one of the two clubs working in conjunction here to broadcast all these baseball games. And if you'd like, you could check out the newest episode of the podcast, which was just posted last week. Uh, we interviewed Miss Gazda about the PAWS Unified PE program. So a lot of interesting information coming out of that. Also, we're joined by John Messenger, the director of bands here at Metuchen High School, to discuss the upcoming spring concert next week. And finally, Josh Hyman and I talked about all the latest in Metuchen High School sports, including these red-hot starts for both baseball and softball and the track season that is now in full swing. So you can check that out by going to MHS Podcast on YouTube or following their Twitter at Podcast MHS. But it's almost time. The two coaches, Leo Danik and Justin Astassi, Meet out at the mound, and we are just minutes away from action here between Middlesex and Metuchen. Stay with us here on the Bulldog Report. This is Eddie Kalegi. So looking up some cool, some key players, I don't know if they're cool, but they're definitely key players here for the Middlesex Blue Jays. First, looking at their offense, Raiden Yost hitting 333 with 13 RBI, four stolen bases. Steven Young at 455 with six RBI and eight steals. Ryan Vollmer hitting 500. He's got 13 ribbies and six stolen bases. Uh, Chris Hope hitting 318 with five RBI. Ty Nicolay has 10 RBI and four steals with a 273 average. Avery West carries a 360 average with eight RBI and six stolen bases. And a limited number of plate appearances so far for the junior Matt Ventuolo, but he's batting 636 with eight RBI. Anthony Long is hitting 500 with 12 RBI, six stolen bases. Really, the motto of this whole thing should be this. There are a lot of forces that Matt Rowe is going to have to contend with, but these pitchers this season have not really, these hitters for Middlesex, have not had to face one of Rowe's caliber just yet, so this is going to be a real tough test. And looking at the sky, it is a picture-perfect day, partly cloudy, game time temperature at 68 degrees here in the Brainy Burrow, and we are excited to get some baseball action going in just a few moments. Good chance right now to take a look at some of the top hitters this season for Metuchen. And like we mentioned, Jack Barry, the MCC commit, 520, 16 RBI. Just behind him, Matt Rowe, the RU commit at 417 with 10 RBI. Luke Schleck batting a nice 381 with three ribbies. Max Kunrich having a productive year, 320, but 11 RBI. Ian Lukaski hits the only official home run. There's been a lot of Little League homers. We saw three against South River due to errors, but the only official home run, home run for Metuchen was by Ian Lukaski, who's batting 300 and also has six RBI. As the coaches, Danik and Nastasi continue to converse over uh, at the home plate area, but it looks like the umpires are moving and we're just about ready to get started. A few minutes late, but not a moment too soon as the Bulldogs and the Blue Jays get ready to duel in the second game of this home and home series. No crazy changes could come from this game, but Middlesex with a loss, it would certainly hurt them. But on the mound, let's talk about him. We have to. It's Matt Rowe making his fourth start of the season, and he has been electric so far. 17 innings pitched, just two hits and three walks. 
Four of those five base runners came in the last starting at Spotswood. No runs allowed, 40 strikeouts has been simply unbelievable. Middlesex gets ready to hit as Matt Rowe steps out there. The Bulldogs will be in their blue uniforms, white caps, blue bills, white pants for Middlesex, blue caps, black uniforms with uh, blue shoulders and white pants. Lakowski, the catcher, you can see some of the defense right there. Caleb Walters looks like he's getting the start at second today. Joseph Fenton at short. In right field, it's Jack Bear. At first baseman is Luke Schlack. As off we go, Matt Rowe doing his last couple warm-up pitches. And then it'll be time for baseball here on a beautiful Wednesday afternoon. Back-to-back, -back, we called the softball game against Middlesex yesterday. Got cut a little short because of rain, but no rain in the forecast this time around. And Matt Rowe is ready to pitch on a beautiful day. Of course, he had to deal with the weather in his second start. He only, that was last Monday, and he only threw 38 pitches in three innings. And was therefore allowed to pitch once again uh, on Friday where he went much deeper. But now, once again, back on his regular rest, had a little more strain in his arm from a longer start on Friday, which was his second complete game so far this season. But Matt Rowe, ready to tow the rubber. Middlesex leadoff hitter will bat. And we're underway here between the Bulldogs and the Blue Jays. A big game with GMC Blue Division implications. Fourth and final game of this top stretch from Metuchen. They're one and two so far. Would love to get to 500 against the two best teams in the GMC Blue Division. Senior Rutgers commit Matt Rowe fires the first pitch. And Allen's going to miss low and inside for a ball. Looks like it's Stephen Young leading off. Hit 269 with 10 ribbies in 2019 at 455, six RBI this season. He's a junior. And the 1 0 is cut on and missed for a strike. A lot of really good pitchers on the Middlesex side that we'll get to in the next half inning. Young is one of those, pitching to a 1.56 ERA so far this season. Here's the 1-1 offering from Rowe. That one's going to drop in for a strike. And now the count is 1-2. and two. Rowe working a little slowly here through the first three pitches. We saw this last start as well. And then once he gets to the second or third inning, really finds his rhythm. And it just becomes smooth and he starts rolling. Here's the 1-2 pitch from Rowe. Swing and a miss. Got him. Stephen Young strikes out to start the game, and Rowe has quickly worked his 41st strikeout of the season. So the two slot in the order here. Nobody out. One out, rather, nobody on. And here's the first pitch from Rowe, and this one is a swing and a miss for a strike. So after missing with the first pitch, this is four consecutive swinging strikes. He's got a high swing rate on basically all of his pitches so far this season. Toughest lineup he's had to carve through so far. Spotswood was tough as well, but this is another huge challenge. And this one driven out to left field, and that catch will be made for the second out. So Anthony Long flies out to left field. And there's quickly two away. And once again, a thank you to everybody tuning in today. This is Eddie Kalegi here on the Bulldog Report. Thank you to Mr. Kath Carter, Athletic Director, for getting all the cameras set up. We actually have two working cameras today, only the second time this season. That's a little different broadcasting these baseball games. We're in the press box uh, facing the football field trying to do these games. As the first pitch here to number three in the order is upstairs for a ball. And it's one and out. Rose 1-0 offering is cut on and missed for a strike, and the count is even 1-1. One one. Fifth swing and miss already here for Matt Rowe in the first inning. Wow. 
Wasn't a good pitching day for Norwood or Malamug yesterday as that one is in there for a strike very low part of the zone. I think the hitter was a little surprised by that call. Looked a little low to me, but regardless, Rowe is ahead in the count one and two. Lekaski the sign, Rowe the windup, the one-two pitch. This one driven foul off into the trees and the at-bat will continue. So one ball, two strikes, two outs here on the top of the first scoreless game between the Bulldogs and the Blue Jays. Here's the pitch from Matt Rowe. In there, strike three called, rung him up with the fastball on the outer part of the zone, side retired. So Raiden Yo strikes out, looking two Ks for a row in the top of the first. Matuchin up to bat next. Scoreless game, Eddie Kalegi right here on the Bulldog Report. Bulldogs coming up next. Bottom of the first inning here. This is a good chance once again as Raiden Yost will be on the mound. We'll break him down in the second. But a quick look at the top hitters for the Bulldogs. We already mentioned it. A lot of seniors have been doing well. Jack Berry especially, Matt Rowe, Luke Schleck, Max Kunrich, and Ian Lukaski all batting over 300. As is Alex Wood, who we didn't get on the graphic, but is hitting 323 this season. Raiden Yost on the mound here for Middlesex. Last and two seasons ago was really good. Went 35 and a third innings, pitched to a 2.58 ERA and had 35 strikeouts as a sophomore. And now coming back a little older is doing even better. 13 innings pitched, 14 strikeouts, and he's pitched to a .54 ERA. So this is definitely a high caliber pitching matchup here between Raiden Yost and Matt Rowe. And for Matuchin, the important thing will be to get base runners on and work things around. We saw that, for example, with the softball team yesterday. They didn't really have any big hits. They did not have a single extra base hit in that game. But walks and singles, they were patient, and they tried to make the most of things. Now, Matuchin does not have the advantage of speed on the base paths, necessarily, aside from a few exceptions, as Middlesex does, but we'll see what happens. The southpaw deals the first pitch inside for a ball, and the Bulldogs batting here. It starts with Alex Wood. Wood, who's been the leadoff hitter for many of these games so far this season, takes that one low for a ball 2-0. Looking at the defense, Matt Venatolo is in right field. At first base is Avery West. Second base is Ty Nicolay, just to name a few. 2-0. That one drops in for a strike. Middle part of the zone, Wood taking all the way, and the count's now at 2-1. one in there for a strike and now the count is even it's two and two so Yost looking for the early punch out here's the 2-2 two -two. this one driven out to left center field that one will be caught out there in center and it's a fly out for Alex Wood to start this game off nice catch out there in center for the Blue Jay outfielder and that's the first out here at the bottom of the first inning So this should bring up Ian Lekaski, the catcher, who, like we said, has the only home run for Metuchen to this point so far this season. Batting 300, also has 6 RBI. And this one has popped up. First base side. And that one's going to be brought in 
for out number two. So Raiden Yost now working. It's the three in the order. Now we are on our zoomed out camera right now because uh, we got a little issue with the zoomed in camera, which has gone off right now. We'll, we'll fix that between half innings coming up. But two outs right now, and I believe this is Matt Rowe batting. And Rowe's going to drive one to short, play it on a hop, throw to first, in time, inning over. So one, two, three inning there for Yost. We'll head to the second scoreless game here between Metuchen and Middlesex. So welcome back here on the Bulldog Report. We're getting ready for inning number two. They actually called that role play a foul ball, so he ended up back up there for the uh, third out. That ended up being a fly out. Uh, we're going to try to troubleshoot the issue with the other camera as soon as we can, but we're going to have to make do with this here in the top of the second to start with. So apologies for the zoomed out view. I'm going to try to fix that in a second. So uh, I'll be back on in a minute here in the Bulldog Report. We're running with a shorthanded crew today, but uh, top of the second coming up here, scoreless game between Metuchen and Middlesex.
Welcome back. Apologies for the slight technical difficulty, but we're back rolling now here for the top of the second inning. Metuchen, as you saw, went down in order in the first. And now top of the second, and Matt Rowe will begin to try to crank through this order a little more. On a swing and a miss there, strike three to the cleanup hitter. And that's out number one. Three strikeouts here for Rowe so far as he continues to carve through this lineup. Number five in the order, swings and misses for a strike there. That's 0-1. It's taken low for a ball, one and one now. So Rowe now up to 43 strikeouts this season through 18 and a third innings. Putting up some really stunning numbers. Here's the 1-1. One, one. This one a grounder past Rowe. Tough play for Walters. Fields it. Double clutches. Throw to first. Looks like he got him by a step, and that's out number two. Nice play by Caleb Walters. Stumbled slightly, but gets the out regardless. And Robert Ulmer is retired. Ulmer, of course, the son of Mr. Ulmer, the gym teacher here at Metuchen High School. But two away here in the second. And the first pitch is in the outer part of the zone for a strike, 0-1. But a nice play by Walters. We haven't seen him much in the games at least we've streamed. It's primarily been Lucas Weiss at second, but Walters here makes a nice play. An inexperienced middle infield with Ian Fenton. And that's a hard swing, but nothing going for him. I believe this is Matt Venatolo, number six in the order. The right fielder batting here. So two outs. Here's the pitch from Rowe. Swing and a miss. Got him. Another strikeout there for Rowe. That is number four through the first two innings. He is in on cruise control. Matuchin will try to get their offense rolling against Raiden Yost here in the bottom half of the second. Scoreless game. Eddie Kalegi here live on the Bulldog Report. We'll be back in a moment. So Yost will get ready to work the second. A lot of really strong pitchers, which we've already alluded to on this team. There are four guys with ERAs below 4.2 that have pitched at least five innings this season. They have had a lot of trustworthy arms here with the Blue Jays. But talking about Metuchen quickly as they'll get ready to bat here in the second. It's been a rough stretch. Last three games, we said just four runs in the last 21 innings. This is a team who prior to that had scored at least four runs in every game this season, and they allowed eight steals. Of course, not as much of a challenge here with Matt Rowe on the mound, and he's much more trustworthy to keep guys off the bases altogether. He's only allowed seven base runners through 19 innings this season, but still, if this comes down to a close game, you don't want to be allowing any base runners because you know these Middlesex guys can end up in motion. They have five different players with at least four steals so far this season. But Raiden Yost gets ready to work here in the bottom of the second in a scoreless game. Takes the sign. The lefties wind up. First pitch of the second is taken low and away for a ball. So Middlesex scored a little early. They scored four runs and then piled it on late with five runs over the last couple of innings. As that one is low, 
Benjamin Norwood yesterday pitched four innings, allowed four runs, four walks, and a strikeout. His ERA climbed from 3.11 to 4.31, while Marcus Malamug had a poor performance uh, out of the bullpen. This one cut on and fouled hard away. It's A.J. Perillo at the plate here. Here's the pitch. That one's going to miss low for a ball. Good eye from Perillo. He's batting 333 so far this season with five RBI. Here's the offering. Another pop up. That one is going to go out of play. You can see over down the right field line, a lot of fans here from both teams excited to see some baseball action this afternoon. And like we said, a beautiful day, temperature just under 70 degrees, a couple clouds in the sky, but an excellent day for baseball. As Perillo, ground ball, gets past the pitcher, Nicolay, scoops it up, throw to first, trying to get the tag down, he can't, it's an infield single, throw a little bit offline, pulled Avery West just slightly off the bag, and it's going to be enough here, and A.J. Perillo will be a leadoff base runner. So first base runner of the game for either side, it's Perillo, who's got some speed, and now Jack Barry will bat. Barry, the team leader in RBI, looks to bunt. Now the throw to first, another off-balance throw. Perillo's in safely, and Avery West now has had quite the task over this past minute or so, trying to corral some pretty wild throws. They tried a little bit of a pitch out there on the bunt attempt. We'll see if Barry squares again. Third baseman in a little bit. He's going to charge here on the attempted bunt. No throw to first here as Barry takes that pitch out of the zone. Middle infield playing deep. First base right on the bag with the first baseman. Third baseman in a little bit and likely will charge even more if Barry tries to drop the bunt once again. Check on the runner. And Barry pulls back the bunt once again. So Barry kind of fooling them, and all of a sudden, Yost has fallen behind and does not want to find himself in danger of allowing two runners to reach base with nobody out. Here's the pitch. Barry takes all the way. That one for a strike. So number five in the order, Jack Barry up here. Perillo takes a solid lead, of course, not going that far with a lefty there. It's a benefit of being a lefty pitcher, being able to look right at the runner. That one is in there in the zone, and now the count has gotten full. It's three balls and two strikes, payoff pitch coming up with Perillo at first and nobody out. Here's the 3-2 to Barry. In there, strike three called. Great pitch from Yost. First strikeout for him. He comes back from behind 3-0 to strike out Barry, and that's the first out here of the second. And that'll bring up Marcus Malamo, who, like we said, got knocked around on the mound yesterday. A back-to-back. Mentucha not playing all of their typical starters here with Perillo in the lineup, for example. It's a little different looking than what we typically see from them. Here's the 0-1 pitch to Marcus Malamuk. And that one goes off the catcher's mitt. And they're actually going to say that hit him. It ricocheted off of Malamug and then goes off the catcher. So Malamug will go to first. And now two runners are on with one out. So now first and second with one away. I believe this is Joseph Fenton. Here's the pitch from Yost. First pitch cranked into left field. That's going to fall for a base hit. Perillo gets a red flag. He's going to stop at third. But it's Luke Schleck actually there with the base hit to load the bases for Fenton. And Matuchin's in business with one out.
Great swing by Schleck, went right with the pitch, got it into left center, got it to fall in just in front of the, uh, the outfielder there. And the Bulldogs in excellent position to capitalize with Joseph Fenton up here. Sacks full, no one, nowhere to put him, one out, needing a double play, and Fenton takes a big crack at it and fouls it back. Scoreless to this point, both pitchers had cruised. Rowe is through two perfect innings. A 1-2-3 first for Yost, but a single by Perillo, a hit batsman. And now another single by Fenton, has, by Schleck has loaded the bases for Fenton. And Fenton takes that one low and in the dirt. Perillo's at third, Malamug at second, Schleck at first. Bottom of the order working here, looking to get Matuchin on top. Just four runs over these last 22 innings. This would be a great spot to capitalize. As Fenton takes that one low and away. Fenton has had a couple big games that we've broadcasted, but not a huge season. He's batting 238 with six RBI in total. Here's the pitch to Fenton. This one driven foul down the first base side. Base is loaded. One out, no score, bottom second. Here's the pitch from Yost. Fenton cuts another one foul. So he'll stay alive. Two balls, two strikes here to Fenton. Schleck with a big lead off first. All three runners with sizable leads. Here's the two-strike pitch from Yost. This one a dribbler off his mitt, throw to second for one, Nicolay fires to first, double play, Middlesex is out of the inning. Bulldogs leave him loaded as Fenton grounds into the old 6-4-3 double play to retire the side, and the Metuchen threat is averted by Raiden Yost, who pitches around some trouble. So the Bulldogs leave the sacks full, and they'll stay scoreless here. We'll head to the third inning. It's no score between the Blue Jays and the Bulldogs right here on the Bulldog Report. So a potential game-changing inning was averted right there. Just a reminder, if you're new to the Bulldog Report, I see we have a lot of viewers today. We stream a lot of baseball and softball action. Next one you can catch is Friday as the softball team will be hosting JFK. That's Islin Kennedy at 4 p.m. here at the MHS Field. You can watch the game and several baseball and softball games throughout this spring season right here on the Bulldog Report. And the other club, along with the podcast in conjunction with the Bulldog Report, is the Media Club. And if you're a high school student interested in helping out with these games, participating in film competitions and more, you can contact their student advisor, Ben Selaski, to learn more information. So Matt Rowe gets ready to work after two perfect innings to this point, and will face the bottom third of the Blue Jay order which is still dangerous and has a lot of speed from top to bottom. Here's the first pitch from Rowe to start the inning, and that one is a ball. Nearly hit the batter there. Pitch from Rowe. And there for a strike. Nice fastball drops in there from Matt Rowe. A 
Lukaski the sign, row the wind up. Here's the pitch. Cut on, fouled off, out of play, and it'll be a 1 2 count now. One ball, two strikes, nobody out top of the third inning. Here's the pitch from Matt Rowe. Check swing. Appeal to first, he did not go around. And after a couple of awkward pitches, it seems like Lukaski hasn't really expected it. A little quick meeting at the mound there, I think, to clarify a sign. These two battery mates have worked pretty well together throughout this season, but looked like a little bit of confusion right there. Here's the two-strike pitch from Rowe. Fouled back. Rose struck out four to this point through two innings. Now up to 44 strikeouts through 19 innings this season without allowing a run. Allowed his first hit of the season in the fifth inning against Spotswood on Friday. Another pitch from Rowe. This one grounded, shortstop. Fenton picks it up, scoops, throws to first on target. Got him for out number one. So Avery West grounds out, and that will start the third inning. West a 360 hitter this season and would have been dangerous if he had gotten on base with six steals tied for second on the team. So that will transition us to the eighth spot in the order. And the first pitch is in there for a strike. Here's the 0-1 from Rowe. That one's in there, and Rowe quickly ahead 0-2. He's been able to paint with the fastball. The off-speed pitches have been pretty good so far, but it's primarily that fastball that Rowe goes after hitters. Just sends it in at a high rate of speed and tries to blow him away. There's a lot of really talented pitchers in New Jersey this year, and Rowe is up there with them. And they'll say strike three. On the swing after an appeal to first as Ventulo is Ventulo is retired. And that's the fifth strikeout here of the game for Rowe and the second out of the third inning. So Ventulo is retired, and this will get to the ninth slot in the order for Ty Nicolay. First pitch from Rowe is cut on out to center, and that's going to be caught, and that will retire the side. One, two, three inning for Rowe. He's through three perfect innings. Matachin looks to respond after nearly scoring and being turned away by Yost in the second. We'll head to the bottom of the third. Scoreless game between Matachin and Middlesex right here on the Bulldog Report. So Raiden Yost gets ready for his third inning of work right here. And Matuchin has to be frustrated about a missed opportunity. We knew this was going to be a low-scoring game with how they were shut down yesterday by Stephen Young, who went five innings, allowed three hits, no runs, and struck out ten Bulldog batters. But you've got to be able to score when the opportunities come against a team at the caliber that Middlesex is. And... Bulldogs had the bases loaded and one out, and Joseph Fenton grounded into a 6-4-3 double play. Middlesex defense has been very smooth so far. And the Bulldogs will have 9-1-2 and two 
in the order due up here. First pitch here from Yost is going to be outside for a ball. And a thank you to everybody tuning in today. Some of our most uh, concurrent viewership that we've had for any of the baseball games. And, of course, if you're new to the Bulldog Report, we stream all of the uh, sports action. We did some football and soccer, basketball and wrestling in the winter, and now doing a lot of baseball and softball now. And we've got another softball broadcast on Friday as the Lady Bulldogs face off with JFK. 1-1 one, one from Yost. The lefty deals and skirshes one across the dirt for a ball. It's 2-1. and one. Two one offering from Yost. This one cut on and fouled off, and the count is now even at two and two. So two balls, two strikes, nobody out here in the bottom of the third. And that pitch is fought off and fouled off. Millsex has not gotten a base runner yet against Matt Rowe, and they've been struck out five times first time through the order. Metuchen had their fair share in the second and couldn't get anything done. Good eye there on the take, and the count is now full. Alex Wood stands on deck here for the Bulldogs. Yost, the windup, the 3-2 pitch. This one caught on and drilled out to left field. Long run. And the catch will be made out there. And Nick Camerano is retired. Camerano only getting his second start of the season. He's one for three so far. Now make it one for four. Bulldogs not with their best lineup today. No Nick Dillon. Uh, no Max Kuhnrich. Neither of them batting. Jackson Fenner not in the lineup either, but he has really struggled so far out of the gates. Missed the first couple games and is hitless in his first 13 plate appearances. 0 for 9 with 4 walks. But Alex Wood, one of the traditional starters that is in there today, cuts on that one and fouls it off. He flew out to center in the first inning. Hitting 323 this season with 5 RBI. Yost, Wines, Deals. This one, another one popped foul, and Yost is quickly ahead 0-2 with Ian Lukaski waiting on deck. On a back-to-back, -back, you see no Kuhnrich today, like we said. No Nick Dillon, no Fenner. Slightly different lineup, and they're hoping that they can get some results with this lineup that has been completely dead on water for these past couple of days. One ball, two strikes. Here's the pitch from Yost. And one will miss high, and the count is now even at two and two. Wood, of course, shorter guy out there, smaller strike zone, and Yost has to be a little more precise. Anyway, here's the 2-2 pitch. This one is driven out to left field, and that will be brought in. So the defensive play continues to be solid, and there's two away. So two flyouts to start the third, and now Ian Lukaski will bat. 0 for 1 with a pop out so far today. And this one is popped up. First base side. They'll give it chase and it'll be off into the Metuchen bullpen. So for those just joining us, only offensive threat was in the bottom of the second. Metuchen loaded the bases on two hits and a hit batsman. But a 6-4-3 double play for Joseph Fenton. Great turn by Ty Nicolay at second. And Middlesex averted that, and Braden Yost has been smooth sailing since. And for Matt Rowe, it's been 9 up, 9 down. This one is driven out to left center field. Three batters, three fly outside, retired. So Metuchen goes down 1-2-3. We'll head to the fourth inning and still scoreless.
So second time through the order here. Let's see if Matt Rowe fares as well as he did the first time. It'll be Young, Long, and Vollmer do up here for Middlesex. And of course, quick uh, correction. Now, of course, I haven't been. It's difficult from our vantage point to see all the numbers. That's actually Nick Dillon who's batting second today. Ian Lekaski, the typical two-hole hitter, is not in the lineup today and is not catching. So Camerano, I believe, is the catcher, and Nick Dillon is in the lineup. So uh, a correction to the last half inning, it's Nick Dillon, not Lekaski, that's in the lineup. So it's actually Lekaski and Kuhnrich, two of the notables that are not in today's lineup. But still, regardless, very different-looking Bulldog lineup, especially after Jack Berry in the five hole. As they've got a couple of reserves in there today playing the back-to-back. But somebody who's not a reserve is that pitcher, Matt Rowe, and he has been great. And looking at his comparison against, compared to some of these other pitchers on this Bulldog team, they, their staff has been solid, but of course Matt Rowe just jumps out there. All these other three who are their primary pitchers, all of ERA is at least over four. Benjamin Norwoods was lower, but he got knocked around by Middlesex yesterday. Middlesex had a big game. Venatolo had two hits. Nicolay had two RBI, and Ryan Vollmer had three hits and ended up collecting three RBI. And that pitch from Rowe will miss. This is Stephen Young, yesterday's starting pitcher who struck out 10 Bulldogs yesterday afternoon in Middlesex, here leading off and playing the field. Here's the pitch from Rowe. In there for a strike. Anthony Long is on deck here to start the fourth inning. Here's the pitch from Rowe. That one is in there. Strike three. Strike two, actually. Two and two. Two balls, two strikes. Anthony Long on deck. Here's the pitch from Rowe. This one a ground ball to second. Fielded cleanly by Walters. Flips to first. Got him. And that's the first out of the fourth inning. So smooth 4-3 put out there to start the fourth. And that will bring up Anthony Long now for Middlesex, who flew out to left in the first inning. Long leading the team among everyday players, tied with Ryan Vollmer at a 500 average entering this game. 12 RBI, 6 steals. First pitch is cut on and fouled down the third base side. So that'll set up an 0 and 1 count. So Rowe cruising right now, but would love some more run support. He only got two runs of support on Friday against Spotswood. This one is driven out to left, and they'll watch that go foul. So Rowe quickly ahead 0-2 here against Anthony Long. Long a senior, but did not play much at all at the varsity level in 2019. Here's the pitch, and that one is high and gets away. Camerano's got to go chase it. So that's something else to consider because Lekaski is typically the starting catcher, has been and was in 2019 as a freshman as well. So having a different battery mate back there definitely throws things off just a wee bit for Matt Rowe. Anyway, here's the 1-2 pitch to Long, and that one is high. So back-to-back -back fastballs have gotten away and been way out of the zone for Rowe. So he'll try to regroup here at a 2-2 count. Here's the 2-2 for Matt Rowe. This one driven foul. Malamug watches that go out at third base. And it comes rebounding back in from the trees. So it'll remain a 2-2 count. Here's the pitch. 
Another foul ball. Long is fighting hard. And we saw Rowe start to wear down in the fifth and sixth inning against Spotswood when he walked a couple of batters and ended up in a bases loaded jam he had to get out of. And he's coming off of a start just four days ago, whereas in that start, he had just pitched 38 pitches in his previous outing. So for Rowe, you know, there is going to be fatigue at some point. And if you can avoid when he gets in a groove and just starts throwing three-pitch strikeouts and cruising and getting 10-pitch innings, if you can try to work him a little bit, it could really pay off later in the game. And that one's going to miss, and now the count is full here to Anthony Long with one out in the fourth inning. Three balls, two strikes, row the windup. Here's the full count pitch. In there, strike three called in the outside corner. Six strikeouts for Matt Rowe, and that's out number two here in the fourth. So Rowe was ahead 0-2. It got stretched back to 3-2, and two, but he negotiates the strikeout. And that'll bring up Ryan Vollmer, who's got speed, can hit for power, and for average. The trifecta, 2019, hit 347, 15 RBI, and had 14 steals. Now as a senior in 2021, he's hitting 500 with 13 RBI, 6 stolen bases. And yesterday was a little bit of a giveaway game, I guess, for Middlesex, for Metuchen, rather, because they had already used both Rowe and Schleck, their two top pitchers, and neither was available. But both are technically available today. Schleck, by the NJSIAA rules, is available in relief, potentially. Of course, Metuchen can kind of do with the rest of their rotation after this because they go on a much easier stretch. They face off with Carteret, who was well below 500 uh, for two games after this. But this four-game stretch is key. If they can win today and finish out 2-2 two and two over this four-game span, real confidence booster. and keeps them in contention at the top of the GMC Blue Division, especially when Middlesex and Spots would have to play each other twice and could potentially beat up on each other. Or if one team takes advantage, Metuchen could find themselves in a clear path to get to second place. They already split things with Spotswood, one apiece. Won the home game 2-0, then lost on the road the next day 2-1. Got blown out yesterday by Middlesex, which was a bit of a surprise. As the Blue Jays put up nine runs against Benjamin Norwood and Marcus Malibug. It's been a different story so far. And Rowe trying to finish off four perfect innings. Vollmer fouls that one off. Raiden Yost, the pitcher, is on deck. So if you're new to the Bulldog Report, be sure to give us a like here on this video and subscribe, and you can continue to check out more action throughout the season. Row the windup. Here's the pitch. Check swing. Got him looking. Seven strikeouts for Matt Rowe. He's through four perfect innings. And the Bulldogs look to finally do something on offense here as they'll be sending up three, four, five in the order. Rowe, Perillo, and Barry do up next. We'll head to the bottom of the fourth. Still scoreless between the Dogs and the Blue Jays. Eddie Kalegi here live. This is the Bulldog Report.
So Rain and Yost will be back out here for the bottom of the fourth inning. Here live on the Bulldog Report, this is Eddie Kalegi. It's been a great one to watch so far between Metuchen and Middlesex. And once again, a quick peek at some of these top hitters. And two of them are due up in this inning. The bottom two, Kunrich and Lukaski, not in the lineup today. Matt Rowe is hitting 417, Jack Berry at 520. They will be batting first and third, respectively, here in the fourth. This was the part of the order that got things rolling last inning. Well, last time around the order, back in the second when they loaded the bases but could not score. Can they scratch across a run for Rowe? Will he have to try to do it himself? In the first game of the season against St. Thomas, he drove in three of Metuchen's six runs. But he'll be the leadoff hitter here and swings and misses at an off-speed pitch. Outclassed right there on the pitch from Yost. And that pitch bounces in the dirt. Now, of course, Yost a lefty, so that's also a trigger for why the lineup looks a little different today. Matuchin trying to bring in some more of their righty power to make something happen against the lefty. Of course, typically, the hitters of an opposite handedness will fare better against the pitcher. As they're not as scrunched up against their zone and have a little more ability to extend. And that one's in there. Strike three called. Matt Rowe watches that one go by. So he's 0 for 2. Second strike out for Yost, and that's the first out of the bottom of the fourth inning. So one out, and that'll bring up A.J. Perillo. Perillo singled and was stranded at third in the second inning. And he watches the first pitch go by for a ball. He primarily starts against lefties. In 2019, as a freshman, got 11 at-bats at the varsity level. Went, had three hits and three RBI. Has five RBI so far this season. And he takes that one inside for a ball, 2-0. and One issue for Yost is that a lot he's been falling behind. 1-0, 2-0 counts. As he's still tried to negotiate that. And he's another person you want to be careful not getting his pitch count too high. But unlike Metuchen, Middlesex has some more reliable relievers they can bring in. Like Anthony Long has pitched well in relief. They've also got Kenny Yonker who's pitched well this season. They have some options. Metuchen does have other options, but of course they have struggled a bit with the ball so far this season. On the mound, aside of course from Matt Rowe. Their offense has powered them, but like we said, their offense has gone cold over these last three and a half games. This one, a ground ball, shot foul, just past the coach's box on the third base side, and now two strikes here to Perillo. Infield playing a little back. Here's the pitch to the cleanup man, Perillo, when he takes that one high for ball four. It's his second trip uh, onto the base paths today as he'll draw a one-out walk. And now let's see if the middle of the order can get something cooking once again as Jack Barry will come up. Barry, who has hit so well this season, had a bit of a tough time his last at bat, was ahead 3-0. They came back and struck him out with three straight fastballs looking. The first pitch to Barry is high for a ball. Like we said, congratulations to Barry, who will be continuing his athletic career at Middlesex County College, committed today to MCC Baseball to join the Blue Colts. Yet another Metuchen player over the past couple years committing now to continue their baseball career elsewhere. Here's 2-0. Barry swings and cranks one down into left field. And that will fall in for a base hit. So Barry with the single. Great contact. Heard him square that ball right up. And now two runners are on with one out. And Matuchin is once again in business with the middle of the order against Raiden Yost. Perillo held up and then moved once he saw that ball drop. Got into second without a throw. Now, two runners are on for Marcus Malamug, who was hit with a pitch on the hand uh, last time. 
and ended up being stranded at second base. Malamug had an RBI, just his second of the season on in uh, Metuchen's game on Friday against Spotswood. He's hitting 181 this season, and of course, like we said, had a probably his roughest outing of the season on the mound in relief of Benjamin Norwood yesterday, allowed five Middlesex runners to score over two innings. So allowed five hits and walked a pair. Perillo at second, Barry at first, Schleck on deck, and Malamug makes some contact, drives one out. Everybody coming out to try to get to this one. Everybody gets close. It'll be caught, though. And that'll be out number two. Nearly a collision out there. It was the left fielder, center fielder, and the second baseman, Nicolay, all came out at it, but... Nonetheless, the catch is made, and that's a big out number two. So now Schleck, who singled on his first pitch he saw in the second inning. He'll swing again first pitch, and that one's fouled off hard third base side. And that's 0-1. Almost got the coach there on the lower leg a little bit. Scoreless game, bottom four. First and third, and a crowded GMC Blue Division at the top battling here. Three strong teams in the Blue Division, Metuchen, Middlesex, and Spotswood. Metuchen finishing off their regular season portion of the schedule against these two other powerhouses here, while Spotswood and Middlesex will duel in a two-game set starting on Saturday the 15th and then continuing on Monday the 17th. Two on, two out here with Schleck up. Here's the pitch. This one popped foul and out of play. Fenton and then Camerano, the next two do up if this inning continues. The senior Schleck looking for a big hit here. Yost with the check on Perillo at second. Now the pitch. Schleck pops one up. Third base side. Catcher gives chase. And no play. And we'll continue. Flip the mask off, but just a little too far, and I think it went on the other side of that fence. So Rowe struck out looking. Perillo walked, hard single from Barry. Malamug flew out on a near collision out there in center field. And now Schleck batting with two on and two out. Metuchen is a right left three on base earlier. And this one popped up. First base side on the run, coming out and making the play is the right fielder, Matt Venatolo. And Metuchen strands a pair once again. So the Bulldogs get runners on with the middle of the order, but cannot capitalize. We'll head to the fifth inning, still scoreless here, between Metuchen and Middlesex. Eddie Kalegi here live on the Bulldog Report. So Matt Rowe has faced the minimum through four innings, 12 up, 12 down to this point, with seven strikeouts, including back-to-back -back looking of Long and Vollmer. Four, five, six, two up here, led by Raiden Yost. And like we said, a few returning players for Middlesex from their 2019 roster, but you can argue that none were more impactful then than Raiden Yost, who as a sophomore was a two-way force. Batted 319, had 12 steals, 17 RBI, so very formidable at the plate, 
And then on the mound, pitched 35 in a third inning. So he logged a lot of innings as a sophomore, a lot of starts, struck out 35 batters, and pitched to a 2.58 ERA. He'll start the Middlesex efforts, looking to get on base here to start the fifth, and he cuts and misses at an off-speed pitch for a strike. Row with the windup, the 0-1. This one is driven out third base side and foul, and the count is now at 0-2. No balls, two strikes here from Rio to Yost, and it looks like time was just called there by Yost, and he'll step back into the batter's box now. Hits lefty, bats lefty, looking to do something against the righty, Matt Rowe, and he takes that one low for a ball. Here's the one-two pitch from Rowe. That one will miss outside for a ball. Count even two and two. Two-two. This one popped up third base side. Long run for Malamug, but he'll watch that one go into the trees. So Yost working a pretty lengthy at bat here after Rowe got ahead 0-2. Robert Ulmer on deck. Here's the pitch from Matt Rowe. Swing and just tap that one to stay alive. Threw one in the dirt, got him to chase, but Yost barely got the tip of the bat on that one and stays alive once again. So the long inning continues here. Two balls, two strikes, lengthy at bat to start the top of the fifth. And that one is dropped by Camerano, misses outside nonetheless. And Yost has fouled off three pitches, taken three balls, and now will face a ninth pitch of this at bat. Ahead in the count, 3 2. Payoff pitch. This one is cracked out to left center. That's going to fall in for the first hit of the game for Middlesex. Raiden Yost with a leadoff single comes back from behind 0 2. And just like the Spotswood game, Rowe allows his first base runner on the leadoff batter in the fifth inning. So a single there for Rowe, a single there for Yost off of Rowe, and Robert Ulmer will bat. Ulmer calls time. Like we said, some lineage there. His father, uh, Bob Ulmer, former football coach, current gym teacher here at Metuchen High School. So a Metuchen connection there with the Blue Jay batter, a junior, as Rowe checks. It's a pinch runner in right now for Yost. That's Kenny Yonker. There's only a two at bats, but he's a pitcher and a base runner primarily. Just the third hit of the season allowed through 21 innings. Yonker will go, swing and a miss, throw to second, on target, but late, and it looks like he kept the hand on the bag. Yes, he did. So, so it'll be Yonker swiping second. Now 
And now a runner in scoring position here for Middlesex. And like we said, if anybody got on base for the Blue Jays, they'd try to get them in motion. Two very evenly matched teams, and any single run could potentially be the difference between winning and losing this ballgame. And now Camerano and Rowe will have another conversation. So Ulmer grounded out in the second inning. Rowe would retire with the first 12, but a bloop single in the center from Yost. Pinch runner Yonker gets to second. And he hopes to get all the way around. Rowe takes a peek. Yonker sidestepping across the, up the line, but not doing anything here. And that one will miss as well. So Rowe has sort of lost the plate a little bit here in the fifth through four innings. Like we said, this is the first time he's coming back on regular rest this season after throwing a lot of pitches. He had a big gap between his first and second start. Went 10 days before pitching again after throwing 110 pitches in an opening day no-hitter. Threw 38 pitches in that second start, but then worked a complete game against Spotswood. And that one is going to get away. Here's the pitch, and that one is low. Looks like three balls here against Ulmer. Definitely not on the aggressive side, wisely. Coach Justin Nastassi trying to see if they can get Rowe to kind of give in. Remember, he walked a couple against Spotswood later in the game, but then worked out of trouble there. Tough spot to be in right now. Speed at second. Nobody out. Here's the pitch to Ulmer. In there for a strike. Taken all the way. Fastball up in the zone. Here's the pitch from Rowe. Ulmer fouls that one off, and the count is now full at three and two. Long inning, nine pitch at bat already for Yost before he dropped in the single. Then five pitches here to Ulmer. Pitch number 15 here of the inning for Rowe with still nobody out. Here's the pitch to Robert Ulmer. He cuts and fires away and fouls it back again. Senior Kenny Yonker is the runner at second. No score, top of the fifth. First threat for Middlesex after getting after Matt Rowe allowed just his third hit of the season through 21 innings pitched. Takes a peek. Here's the pitch. That one is a swing and a miss. Down goes Robert Ulmer. As he'll go down swinging for the eighth strikeout here for Rowe. So a big time strikeout here with one away. So runner still at second. Looks like they'll pitch to the six hole hitter. First pitch from Rowe. Swing and a miss for a strike. I believe this is Mark Geist, the senior here. Geist batting at 261 with five RBI this season. Yonker still the runner at second. They're keeping an eye on him, and Rowe steps off, and he'll tread back to the second base as Walters took a step forward. Now 
And that one low and away, nearly got away. Camerano stops it with his glove. So Rowe definitely doesn't have the same control as he had through the first four innings. Similar story to what we saw against Spotswood, where he ran into trouble in both the fifth and the sixth, but escaped with the lead, and Matuchin survived to win 2-0 on Friday. Here's the pitch. And that one is going to be off the plate, they say, outside for a ball. One out, runner on second. Rowe already pitch, approaching 20 pitches here in this fifth inning. They say Luke Schleck, according to AD John Cathcart, is available as well today to possibly pitch, considered their second best pitcher. This one fouled off, long run, and that will go out of play as Schleck gives it a look. Here's the pitch from Rowe. That one is going to get away. It's a dropped third strike. Throw to first. Looks like they got him. Camerano almost forgot the rules there for a second. Geist is going to be retired via the strikeout, number nine, but Camerano forgot if you drop the third strike, you got to throw back to first. And on the little confusion there, Yonker advances to third. So row two-thirds of the way there, and we'll face Avery West, who grounded out to shortstop in the third inning. And he takes that one low for a ball. If Rowe can get out of this, that would be a huge momentum booster, but it also adds some pressure still to this offense that in both the second and fourth inning has been very disappointing here. For Metuchen. And this one is cranked out to left field. Long run, and that will be foul. So Avery West gave that ball a ride, and you'd think now Rowe would probably go in a different direction with his pitch selection here, as West, as West nearly dialed that one up. Metuchen will have 8, 9, and 1. Fenton, Camerano, and Wood do up in the bottom half of the fifth. Here's the pitch from Rowe. This one a shot foul. Rowe has just narrowly escaped here two pitches in a row. As West has made solid contact on consecutive pitches. Yonker the runner at third. Pinch running for Yost who had a leadoff single. Stolen base advanced to third on the weird strikeout that was dropped. Rose struck out nine so far through four and two-thirds innings, allowed just the one hit to this point, and is trying to keep the Blue Jays off the board. The Dutchins had opportunities, loaded the bases with one out in the second, grounded into a double play, then had first and second one out in the fourth, and left both those runners on. Here's the pitch. And in there, strike three called. Rowe comes back after the leadoff single to strike out the side. Ten strikeouts for Matt Rowe through five innings. Middlesex is denied, and this will stay a scoreless tie as we head to the bottom of the fifth inning. Rowe pitching clutch, 10 Ks again, and Matuchin keeps the Blue Jays off the board. Scoreless game, bottom of the fifth coming up. Bulldogs coming up to bat. This is Eddie Kalegi. Stay with us here live on the Bulldog Report.
So bottom of the fifth coming up, Raiden Yost will pitch to eight, nine, and one in the order. I'll start with Joseph Fenton, who had a huge RBI chance earlier. But nonchalantly grounded into a 6-4-3 double play. Sun in the shadows as bright as ever here. And Fenton will lead off here. So Fenton had a couple of big RBI hits, including a Little League inside the park home run against South River earlier this season, but has struggled a bit. Nonetheless, can't be easy, of course. He is a freshman and, uh, of course, replacing uh, most recent freshman player of the week in the Big Ten, Jay Harry, who had been the shortstop and a cornerstone in the middle infield for the past four years. As that one gets away. Nice block by the catcher. Yost overall, I mean, you can't complain. Four innings pitched, three hits, a couple of walks, struck out two, and the most important category, no runs allowed, and this remains a scoreless game. Camerano on deck, here's the pitch to Fenton, and he dribbles one foul down the first base side. Middlesex, on the other hand, will also have 8-9-1 due up. It'll be Venatolo, Nicolay, and Young who will bat in the top of the sixth. Fenton fouls another one hard, sharply back behind him. Here's the sign, the wind up the pitch from Yost. That one outside stands the catcher up. Good eye from Fenton to take that one. And that one inside nearly got him on the foot, but it's a ball. Here's the pitch to Fenton. Outside, ball four. Fenton draws the leadoff walk, and Matuchin has another base runner. They've stranded four on base between the second and fourth innings so far. Second free pass issued by Yost. He's also hit a batter today. And it looks like they'll bring in a pinch runner for Fenton. Looks like it's Josh Slowitzki, who's been their typical pinch runner so far this season. Takes a solid lead off first. We'll see if Yost checks on him a couple times. Camerano, just his fifth plate appearance here, the junior, one of four this season, 0 for 1 today. And the pickoff move, throw to first. Slowitzki back in safely on the throw to West. Here's the pitch. Another check back at first. That's what makes it so difficult with the lefty because for a righty, you have to worry about turning around. For a lefty, you can look like you're throwing home and still just do a little pivot and flick it over to first base on target. And that's why it's so dangerous to take any sort of lead against a lefty pitcher. Dropping down to bunt. Check back at first. The dive and nearly... Picked him off at first base. Slowitzki's back in safely. Alex Wood, top of the order, due up next for the Docks. Here's the pitch, dropping a bunt again. Gets one down, a very beautifully placed bunt. Yost comes off, throws to first, but Camerano does his job 
and moves Slowitzki into scoring position. So Camerano getting the start today. A couple of players out after the back-to-back, -back, also due to the fact that there's a lefty. Regardless, does his job. And now it'll be back to the top of the order with a runner in scoring position and Alex with Alex Wood up here with one out. And Speed and Slowitzki at second. And the runner at second, of course, not nearly the advantage that Yost had when Slowitzki was at first. But that was such a beautifully placed bunt by Camerano. Didn't get into any sort of double play. Just let it just tap off the bat. Ended up right in front. Didn't care if he was thrown out. The goal was just to get the runner over to second and avoid the strikeout. Or any sort of pop out where Slowitzki wouldn't have been able to move. So Slowitzki takes the lead. And Wood steps out of the batter's box to stretch things out. Nick Dillon batting second today is on deck. And the turnaround, and that one is thrown into the outfield. Solowitzki is going to go to third. Now he's caught a rundown. And he misses him and gets back into second base. What a play by Josh Slowitzki. And now the ball gets wildly in there. Now Coach Leo Danik's coming out for a conversation with the umpire. Now I'm trying to figure out, because of course it's not great with our camera, I'm not sure if Slowitzki ever threw the ball. Because he stepped off. I think he faked to throw the ball. Almost like a little bit of a hidden ball trick. Then Slowitzki broke for third. Then they threw the ball over to third base. Then he ran back to second. Nikolay could have easily gotten him. And somehow Slowitzki got under. Conversation between the umpires. Looks like he's safe at second, but that was chaotic. So he steps off. I think he faked the throw, and I think he died. They kind of faked him out, and th he thought that ball had gotten away. Breaks for third. They throw to third. Then they throw back to second, and somehow Slowitzki gets under the tag from Nikolai. But Matuchin dodges a bullet. Wood's going to fly this one out to third base side. Pop up, and that'll be out number two. So all that, and just a lazy pop up for Wood, and now there's two away. So both teams have had their chances with runners in scoring position and have not capitalized. Can Matuchin finally do something? Can Slowitzki not getting caught on the base paths there be a little bit of a boost as Dillon takes that one in for a strike. Nick Dillon at the plate hitting 350 this year with three RBI on the mound. Three and a third innings, four earned runs in relief, pretty solid. 2019 as a freshman, he hit 283 with eight ribbies. Yost takes a peek at Slowitzki. Here's the pitch. That one is low for a ball. Matt Rowe is on deck. He's 0 for 2 today. Been surprisingly quiet at the plate while having a stellar day on the mound. Big lead at second for Slowitzki. Yost takes a look. Now fakes the throw back to second. And again, it looked like he pump faked there. <clears throat> Almost fooling me. But he focuses in at the plate. Here's the pitch. That one is outside to Dillon. So a long fifth inning here. Top of the fifth. Rowe had to dodge a bullet with a runner in scoring position and nobody out and did so with three strikeouts. 
Joseph Fenton walked Camerano, bunted him over to second. Solitsky somehow stayed at second on that crazy rundown play. Then Wood popped out to third base. Slowitzki at second. Scoreless game. Here's the pitch from Yost. This one is dribbled foul, and it's two strikes now on Dillon. Matt Venatolo will be first to bat for Middlesex in the top of the sixth. See him bottom of our screen. Right fielder number four. Big check on the runner. Pitch from Yost. This one is popped up. First base side. They'll give it a look and it's out of play. Lengthy game. Got started at 4.05. Already an hour and a half in the books. And it's just the fifth inning at this point. No score. What a duel. Very different from the 9-1 game. That Middlesex won at home yesterday against the Bulldogs. This one, a chopper, third base side, and that one is going to go foul. And Dillon stays alive. Nearly hit that one fair, and if that one had stayed fair, and that got away from the third baseman, could have potentially brought home Slowitzki, depending on where the left fielder was. Outfielder's playing decently deep, especially in left. Here's the pitch to Dillon. Another foul ball and another lengthy at bat continuing here. Like we said, after this, there are some tough games, but the toughest stretch of the Bulldogs' schedule will end. Those two games with Spotswood that they split, they dropped the first against Middlesex. Before that, they were in first place. They were at 8-1, and 6-0 in the blue division. But they faded back to third. Spots would smack in the middle between these two teams. Middlesex still unbeaten in blue division play, but with two games against Spotswood still ahead the next three days. As that one skips low, count is full to Nick Dillon. Two outs, runner on second, fifth inning, no score. Here's the pitch to Dillon. Low ball four, and Matt Rowe will come up with a chance to do some damage and help himself with two outs. Set third walk of the game here for Yost. And Matuchin trying to avoid leaving multiple men on for the third time in five innings and looking to finally capitalize. Just four runs over the last 25 innings. And here comes a conversation at the mound. Looks like Coach Justin Nastassi coming out. <clears throat> and they'll talk with Yost before this massive at bat for Matt Rowe. And Rowe, of course, we rave about his pitching numbers, but you know he's a two way threat. Looking at the top hitters, he's right there 417 average, 10 RBI, just behind Jack Berry. And like we've alluded to, I think we've shown this graphic a couple times. We can't get enough of this uh, dopey dog joke that I made, but it's a rough stretch for the Bulldogs. Um, make it four runs in 25 innings. They've been outscored 11-4. to four. And like we said, most importantly, they've dropped two positions in the Blue Division standings in this tight three-way battle for the Blue Division pennant between them, Middlesex, and Spotswood. But Yost will settle in. And face the opposing pitcher, Rowe. Rowe, 0 for 2 today, flew out to left and struck out looking in the fourth. Has, was quiet at the plate in his last two starts on the mound, but also had three RBI against St. Thomas in the season opener when he pitched a no-hitter. Then had a complete game as well on Friday and smack in the middle of the rain game against Dinellen, where he only went three innings and was subbed in for Kunrich for the last couple. Here's the pitch to Rowe. He takes that one in there, a curveball for a strike. 
Nice off-speed pitch. It seems like Yost has kind of been able to work around Rowe. Rowe, of course, focused on his craft on the mound, but this is the time he also has to lock in at the plate and see if he can help himself. This one is a dribbler up the third baseline and foul. Here is the pitch. Rowe watches that one low, a fastball. If Rowe continues the inning, A.J. Perillo is due up next for Metuchen. Bottom five, no score, another chance with two runners on and two outs. Yost briefly steps off, now he's ready again. Here's the pitch to Rowe. That one is taken for a ball. Could have been strike three, I believe. Now instead, the count is full. Yost looking a little displeased with the home plate umpire and the second base umpire, neither of which given any sort of signal there about a strike three. Here's the pitch. Rowe drives one out to left field. That one's going to get down for a base hit. Selitsky's going to score. Heading to third is Dylan. He'll be waved home. Dylan coming home. No throw at the plate. It's a two-run double from Matt Rowe. And the touch it leads it 2-0. Matt Rowe helps himself. Remember I compared him to Jacob DeGrom that one start. Not getting the run support, but pitching so well. You know what you do in that scenario? You help yourself. Matuchin breaks the drought, gets back in the scoring column, and make it a 2-0 game in the bottom of the fifth inning. What a clutch hit for Matt Rowe. A team without some of their veteran starters, Lukaski, Fenner, Kunrich all not in the lineup. Matt Rowe, of course, will be pinch run for here. He gets the job done. And for Middlesex and Raiden Yost, they have to be frustrated. Benjamin Norwood will be the pinch runner. They already used their primary runner, Slowitzki. But a couple of missed opportunities. They would have been out of this inning twice. First off, when Slowitzki nearly got picked off, they had him. He thought the ball was thrown and had gotten away, tried to get the third. Yost was still holding the ball. And then... On the throwback to second, somehow he got under the tag from Nikolay. And it's not like that was a controversial call. Nikolay knew it. He was just in disbelief that he wasn't able to tag him when he had him beat by about 10 feet. And an evasive slide by Slowitzki. And it explains why he's their pinch running specialist. And then, of course, 2-2 pitch. Could have been a strike three call, but they said it was high. And then on the payoff pitch, Matt Rowe delivered with a huge two-run double. And now, Yost is chased. He's responsible for Rowe at second. And Kenny Yonker will come in, hoping to limit the damage. In 13 and third innings this season, he struck out 17 batters and pitched to a 4.20 ERA. And all of a sudden, Matt Rowe is just six outs away from his third win on the season on the mound and a huge Metuchen victory. But absolutely the biggest hit of the Bulldogs season to this point as they seek their 10th win to get to 8-2 and two and end up just a game behind Spotswood again and I believe a half game here behind Middlesex with Spotswood and Middlesex set to face off for two games on Saturday and Monday. But what a massive hit by Matt Rowe to make this a 2-0 game. And now Kenny Yonker will get ready to work. So Perillo will bat next. Bulldogs in front to nothing. Stay with us. This is Eddie Kalegi here on the Bulldog Report.
So here's Yonker now, getting ready to face off with A.J. Perillo. Matuchin has scored two in the inning. Perillo has reached base in both of his plate appearances, singled in the second, walked in the fourth, stranded both times. But the Bulldogs have just scored four runs over 25 and two-thirds innings and now come through in the clutch with Matt Rowe delivering two runs for himself. And now Yonker misses the plate badly. And for Middlesex, I mean, there has to be obvious frustration with that potential strike three call. That was called the ball and resulted in Rowe getting the chance to deliver on 3-2. And now Perillo delivers into left field for a base hit. Norwood is going to get held up at third. Perillo's on base for the third time today. Throw comes into home. Norwood not going anywhere. And the inning will continue with Perillo getting the single. This will bring up Jack Barry. Before we get to his at bat, let's take a look at a replay of this Matt Rowe hit. And you see they take a quick peek, and Rowe just goes right with the pitch and loops it out, and it gets down in left field. And you can see Nick Dillon scoring from first, hustling all the way around, and Rowe was fired up after getting that double. So Barry at the plate right here. One for two, struck out looking in the second, singled in the fourth. Yonker, who's already been used as a pinch runner today, takes a peek. Here's the offering. That one's in there for a strike to Barry. Marcus Malamug on deck. Middlesex, once again, will have 8, 9, and 1. Venetolo, Nicole, and Stephen Young do up in the top of the sixth against Rowe. This one cut on, flown down the left field line, giving chase... And looks like it'll go foul. What a game. And that hit for Matt Rowe, I mean, that is huge. To come through in a spot like that in such a big way. A massive momentum shifter. That one's going to be low and away for a ball. Big leads off first and third. Here's the pitch. That one is taken low. So Barry working the count here as Matuchin is hoping to add to their two-run lead. Here's the pitch to Barry. He drives one out to left field. And he can't make the catch. It gets away. One run is home. Here comes number two. Barry is in the second. He's fired up. The Middlesex County College commit, ready to go to the Blue Colts next year, but still doing damage in blue here in M-Town. Two runs score on the error in left field, and Matuchin has expanded this to a four-run lead. Four runs over 21 innings. Now four right here in the bottom of the fifth. Like we talked about, I know the sun and the shadows have to be a factor on that play. And now Malamug will bat. And what a two-out rally. And what a bounce back after this team had the bases loaded in one out and then first and second in one out and couldn't score either time in the second and fourth, respectively. But here with two outs, and the big call, the no call, on the potential strike three to row, now has cost them four runs, and has made a comeback next to impossible against one of the best pitchers in the county. 
Shot by Malamug, that one a dive at short, what a play, throw to first, looks like he got him. What a play by Steven Young to end the inning, but not before Matuchin comes up huge. Matt Rowe and Jack Berry with each with a two-run double, and Matuchin leads it 4 nothing as we'll head to the sixth inning. Six outs away from win number 10 and an 8-2 record in the GMC Blue Division. Eddie Kalegi here on the Bulldog Report. Stay with us, you won't miss a thing. We'll be back in just a moment. So Matt Rose ready to go here in the sixth inning. Hoping for six more outs. And the Bulldogs have given him a cushion. Well, he gave himself half of that, and then Jack Barry added to it. A huge four-run inning. And it's exactly what Matucha needed. And a win here would give them some much-needed momentum when they have an easier stretch of the schedule coming up. Just in two more innings, it's the light at the end of the tunnel. Two games against Carteret and some easier opponents. Not saying those are going to be, you know, walk-in-the-park games, but it's definitely quite the dichotomy to having to face Spotswood and Middlesex back-to-back. -back. Matt Venatolo will bat. He had a big game. He went two for three on Tuesday. Then Ty Nicolay. This one popped up. First base side. Walter's waving everybody off. He's got it in the sun for the first out. So Venatola retired. That'll bring up Ty Nicole. Flew out in the third. Just the one base runner. Raiden Yost singled to left. Yonker is the pinch runner. Got it down to third. But then three straight strikeouts of Ulmer, Geist, and West. And Rowe has punched out 10 through five and a third innings. That last one was his 50th strikeout of the season through 22 innings. That first pitch misses there for a ball. So a massive performance today for Matt Rowe on both sides of the field, pitching and, of course, hitting. Nicole batting 273, has 10 RBI and 4 steals, has also made some... Flashy plays at second base today. That one is in there for a strike, and two strikes now in Nicole with the top of the order waiting next. Rowe working much quicker than earlier in the game. Here's the pitch. This one is fouled off to the third base side. Camarano the sign. Here's the two-strike offering from Rowe. That one brushed him off a little bit. Inside for a ball. Count is even at two and two. Ground ball. Second base. Walters picks it. Throws to first. Got him by a couple of steps and two away. Nice play by Caleb Walters there at second. And that'll bring the top of the order back up. It'll be Steven Young who struck out and grounded to second. 0 for 2 today. After pitching five stellar innings on Tuesday.
But Yost, who had a .54 ERA coming into this, got slightly inflated, four big runs on two two-run doubles, one by Rowe, one by Barry, all with two outs in the bottom of the fifth inning. And probably the craziest inning we've seen so far this season. A swing and a miss for a strike. With, of course, that near pickoff where somehow Slowitzki got back to second in the rundown on a fake throw. Thought the ball got away as it's 1-1 one and one here to Young. Then it was a 2-2 two -two count. They called a potential strike three as a ball three. Next pitch, Matt Rowe, two-run double. Another single, then another Double on a misplayed ball by Barry brought home two more. Dropping the bunt is Young, and that one's going to go up the line. The count is one and two. Young trying to sneak his way on base. Rowe still has only, to this point, allowed three hits through 22 and two-thirds innings this season while striking out exactly 50 batters. Double-digit Ks in all three of his starts now that have gone more than three innings. He struck out eight in the three-inning performance against Donnellan in the rain last Monday. Anyway, here's the pitch. This one grounded a third right into the glove of Malamug. He steps, fires to first, select the nice pick, and a very smooth 1-2-3 inning for Rowe. Three balls put into play for Middlesex, but nothing going. We will head to the bottom of the sixth inning. Bulldogs leading at 4-0. Eddie Kalegi here live on the Bulldog Report. So here we go, bottom of the sixth inning. And this first pitch is clobbered. That's going to be a base hit. Anthony Long on the mound. He's not allowed to run through an inning in two-thirds so far, but allows a hit there to Schleck as he rams a single out there. So Yonker is done after the brief appearance. Now you know, I live with my little dog puns. We had the uh, rough stretch, but now... Who let the dogs out? Last three and a half games, they'd only scored four runs in 25 innings. Fifth inning, four runs scored. Big smile on that dog's face. Is there on the steal. Schleck advances to second. And Matuchin is right back in business after one pitch and looking to extend this lead. And for now... Rowe, you know, he's pretty comfortable with a four-run lead, but this is a lot of padding just to make them feel better because Middlesex beat them bad. It was a 9-1 to -one game on yes yesterday. They'd like to make it a similar story here. And Middlesex especially piled it on in the late innings. They scored seven of their nine runs in the fourth inning or later. Here's the pitch. This one is clobbered. Out to center. 
Drifting back, catch is made, not tagging his Schleck, he'll stay at second. So two away now for Alex Wood. So two away for Alex Wood. First pitch is going to miss. Before Matuchin can get out of here, they will have to face a difficult part of the order in the, bo in the top of the seventh. Two, three, and four. Anthony Long, Ryan Vollmer, and Raiden Yost. Long on the mound right now. Now two and a third innings of relief this season, and it's not allowed to run as that one is taken high. So this would be Middlesex's first loss in the Blue Division. They have two other losses, including one to South Plainfield that they got blown out in. They had won their previous five matchups with Matuchin as Wood's going to line one into center field. That's going to drop in for a base hit. Schleck's going to come around. The throw home is late, and the lead is 5-0. Alex Wood with an REI single to tack on to this Matuchin lead. It was 0 for 3 to this point, but brings home Schleck. And Matuchin adds some cushioning. And now Nick Dillon will bat with two outs and a runner on first. First run allowed by Anthony Long on the mound this season. But not only in the blue division, not only to split the series, but a big deal for Matuchin at this point if they could win. Like we said, the previous five meetings had gone... Middlesex's way in these contests, including a bad loss yesterday. Throw back to first. Wood dives in safely. Two outs. Runner on first is Wood. Marching band rehearsal, it looks like it's going to be going on, so hopefully we can get this game over before it gets loud. Wood's going to try to go to second here. Throw pulls Nicole off the bag. Wood now stumbles, was trying to get to third, but after tripping on the base, decided better of it and takes the turn back to second. Wild throw back there from the catcher. If that had been on target, Wood got a terrible jump there. They would have had him by a mile, but a throw pulled Nicole way off. Things will continue here with the runner in scoring position. Already a run home in the inning. 5 nothing is your score in the bottom of the sixth. And that one's cut on and fouled back to the screen. Hard foul ball, first base side. Single for Schleck, stole second, ground out for Fenton, fly out for Camerano. And then Wood with an RBI single to make it 5 nothing. Here's the pitch to Dillon. Takes that one upstairs for a ball. Dylan 0 for 2 with a walk and a run scored. Matt Rowe is on deck. Here's the pitch. This one, fly ball, right field, in comes Venatolo to make the catch. Side retired, but the touch and adds one more. Last chance for the Blue Jays coming up as Matt Rowe looks for his third complete game shutout of the season. 5 nothing. your score as we head to the 7th. Eddie Kalegi here on the Bulldog Report.
Top of the seventh inning, Eddie Kalegi. We really appreciate everybody who's tuned in. It's been our most viewership we've gotten for any baseball game so far this season. And there will be more. Like we said, the softball team Friday will be facing off with Island Kennedy at 4 o'clock. You can catch that game right at 4 here on the Bulldog Report. Uh, our usual producer uh, and video director, Ben Salaski, couldn't be here today. He was getting his vaccine, but uh, Mr. Cathcart, the athletic director, appreciate him for setting everything up and helping us out. And we had that tech issue in the first inning, but we've been smooth sailing ever since. And for Matuchin, they've been smooth sailing after the fifth inning. When Matt Rowe buried a double with two strikes and two outs to make it a 2 nothing game. Then Barry added two more to make it 4 nothing. A little more padding with an Alex Wood single to bring home Luke Schleck in the sixth. And that's where we're sitting now at 5 nothing. Matuchin can hang on. It would be their 10th win. It'd snap a two-game losing streak. Get them back to 8-2 and two in the blue division. And put them one game back of Spotswood. Half game back of Middlesex. And the first pitch there... To Long is swung fouled off. Long, Volmer, and then Yost's spot in the order. The cleanup spot. But I'm not sure if they outright subbed him out of the game. As that one is in there for a strike. Rose so far through six innings has allowed just one hit. Stranded him at third. That was the one threat. Laid off single by Raiden Yost in the top of the fifth inning, but then he struck out Ulmer, Geist, and West, one, two, three. This one is driven out to left field, coming in, playable, catches made, one away. The fly out to left, 0 for 3 day here for Anthony Long, and that'll bring up Ryan Vollmer, who's 0 for 2 with a couple of backwards Ks in the scorebook, struck out looking in the first and the fourth. Hasn't been nearly as untouchable, but of course, you know, with Rowe, I mean, he's still getting the outs. And Vollmer is going to take that first one for a ball. <laughs> still, it's amazing. No earned runs, three hits right now, and three walks compared to 50 strikeouts through 23 and a third innings pitched. Simply remarkable. And once again, we talked about this during his last start, but... Uh, I mean, it's useful to mention it again, but this is really a great sign to see someone like Rowe and Harry, of course, from last year, Matuchin really building a strong foundational baseball program where they can have successful players moving on to play in the Big Ten back-to-back -back years with Harry, of course, at Penn State, and Rowe will be a scarlet knight in the fall. Both of those teams, pretty prestigious baseball programs, and of course the Big Ten, one of the top athletic conferences in the country. Vollmer batting 500, but it's been quiet in today's game. Had a big game yesterday. Had three hits and three RBI, leading in both categories. Here's the pitch. This one, a ground ball right to Schleck. Picks it on the hop. Steps on first, and Matuchin is one out away from splitting the series with Middlesex and snapping their two-game skid. So it'll come down to Raiden Yost, who has the only hit to this point against Matt Rowe. And like we said, there is marching band practice going on outside right now, so it's going to start getting a little louder here through these first couple, last couple of pitches. And this one is a shot over to short, and that's through for a base hit. So Yost is on for the second time with the second hit. He now has half the hits against Matt Rowe this season. And he's not out of the woods yet. And this will bring up Robert Ulmer to bat. 0 for 2 with a ground out and a strikeout. So Rowe allows his fourth hit of the season, second of the day. And how about Yost getting to say he has half those hits? They're going to keep him in as the runner right here. He does have speed himself. Won't go crazy. Now he will because the pitch gets away from Camerano and Yost will head over to second. So he'll move into scoring position here. Yost has four steals this point in the season. 
But Rowe really just needs to be concerned on the hitter, not the runner with this five-run lead. Though, of course, he'd love to keep him off the board. And that one's going to get his way as well. So some clear fatigue. Back-to-back -back wild pitches by Rowe. And all of a sudden, Yost is at third. And for just the second time this season, Matt Rowe has a runner at third base to worry about. Trying to keep the scoreless inning streak alive at 23 and two-thirds to start the season. Here's the pitch to Rowe from Rowe. Popped up, and it'll be fouled off. Schleck and Barry both give it chase, but it's out into the lot. Here's the pitch from Rowe. That one gets away. Yost is going to hold up as Camerano blocked it slightly with his glove. And we'll keep going. Ulmer at the plate, Yost at third, Metuchen leading 5-0, two out, seventh inning. Here's the pitch from Rowe. That one is in there for a strike, and now the count is full. Three balls, two strikes. Yost will be going on the pitch. Blue Jays down to their final strike. Camerano with the sign. Rowe with the pitch. He struck him out, and that'll do it. Matt Rowe with his third complete game of the season, a two-hit shutout, and the Bulldogs snap the two-game losing streak and beat Middlesex 5-0. Two hits, no walks, 11 strikeouts, simply masterful for one of the top pitchers in the GMC, and Metuchen improves to 10-3. For Middlesex, their first loss in Blue Division play, Raiden Yost got knocked around after two big doubles by Barry and Rowe played in two apiece in the fifth to break the Metuchen slump on offense, and they take the victory. And now the difficult part of the schedule is over, and Metuchen can get a slight breather. But a huge win for the Dogs as they take this one 5 nothing. The winning pitcher, Matt Rowe, the losing pitcher, Raiden Yost. A thank you to everybody who tuned into today's broadcast. Mind you, there's more. Next stream is Friday as the girls will host JFK. Once again, that'll be at 4 o'clock. But a thank you to everybody for tuning in. This is Eddie Kalegi here on the Bulldog Report signing off once again. Final score, 5-0. But Touchin' wins it.